the board is aware the education code requires uh, that we present a first interim report uh, by December the 15th and a second interim report by March the 15th uh, to comply with uh, the code and also to keep both the County Office of Education and the State of California updated with regard to the district's fiscal solvency. The second interim report includes all activity through January the 31st and as Ms. Cooksey pointed out or in, in her presentation, we'll actually start where she left off. We actually have six different possibilities with regard to the budget because of where we are in our current state of negotiations with the impasse with Mount Diablo Education Association. And as of January the 31st, which was before the conclusion of bargaining, based on the information that we had at that time, if the taxes that Governor Brown proposes to be enacted were to pass, based on information as it was in January, we would be certified positive. Based on the district's last, best, and final offer, which was actually made on March the 1st, so after the second interim reporting period, we would be qualified, and as Ms. Cooksey pointed out, we would have a negative uh, unassigned income balance of about $4.75 million. The same would be true if the taxes pass under Matias offer. If the taxes fail, however, we have a far more dire situation in that under the status quo, we would actually be negative in our certification because we would not have a positive unassigned ending balance of June 30th, 2013. The same is true under Medea's last, best, and final offer. Under the district's last, best, and final offer, we would be qualified because we would have a positive uh, ending balance in June of 2013, but a negative in June of 2014. We're going to talk about this in much more great detail later on in the presentation under the multi-year projection, but just to kind of carry over from where Deb left off. We get to the natural question of we had a very large opening balance, so how on earth did we in a year's time manage to get to being potentially qualified or even potentially <coughs> negative with some of the uh, things that are currently going on in the district? And part of the problem is our operating deficit. We do have an ongoing deficit before anything else comes in currently of about $12 million a year. And on top of that, uh, we have some new things that have taken place. Now the operating deficit we currently have is actually part of a multi-year plan. And recall back when ARA uh, was first coming about and we looked at where we were financially as a district, we were having a great difficulty at the time and the board directed that we utilize the federal funding as flexibly as we could to make us be able to sustain program over the long term to get to the point where the state would eventually get to economic recovery and we would then be able to turn things back around again. Now as we've watched over the past two years, the state's economic recovery has stalled. It's still making some progress, but it's not moving near fast enough. And Funding for educational agencies is a trailing factor. We don't start getting more funding until after the economy has taken off and people have actually paid their taxes. So all of the agencies that receive state tax money basically receive their funding on a trailing. So when the economy first went down, it was a little while before we went down. But then when we did, we went down quite quickly. And so we will drag behind the rest of the economy and coming back up again. Meanwhile, we've had some significant new issues come up in the district over the course of the past year and in the state. The first being Clayton Valley High School and its effect on the unrestricted general fund. We have a detailed screen about that later in the presentation, but basically $3.65 million a year that we have to address, as well as if the taxes fail under Governor Brown's current proposal, one of two things would happen. A $370 per ADA cut across the board plus one of the two following items. Either the elimination of transportation revenue at 74, which for us would be $74 per ADA, or a revenue limit cut for all the districts of the state, which for us would be about $85 per ADA. So a total cut of somewhere between $444 and $455 per ADA, or about somewhere between $13.5 and, and $14 million. <coughs> Meanwhile, we also have negotiations. As Ms. Cooksey mentioned, we did not end up taking furlough days for 11-12. We did refund. Uh, the days that were being pulled, uh, being prepaid for the units that chose to do so to spread them across their entire year during February. And then the offer that's currently on the table with an off schedule payment in 11 12 of 1.64%, and in 12 13, if the taxes pass, of another 1.36%. 
So meanwhile, when we are offering payments, we're not receiving any. Uh, the COLA for this year was two and a quarter percent. It was fully cut off and offset by an increase to the deficit factor. So basically, you'll see on a, a later slide and two slides from now how the revenue limit goes up, but the funded amount does not. And in fact, this year it actually went down because we had two mid-year trigger cuts that also came about. Uh, one of $12.85 for the fact that the state revenues didn't come in where the governor estimated them, and then a $42.18 per ADA cut that was in lieu of cutting transportation by 50%. Or a total cut of $1.8 million, $55.03 per ADA. That is roughly a deficit of 20.602%, or basically the equivalent of the state saying, we will fund you for 143 in the 180 days of the school year. So when you look at 20%, 20.6% of our year, it would be like ending school on April the 23rd. Or taking, a, a, from a per day standpoint, if we were to say, okay, we're gonna cut the school day between 60 and 75 minutes, depending on the grade level, uh, to make that percentage of a day cut. But this is the grid I was talking about. With regard to our revenue limit, we should be at 6,489. The middle block there is fiscal 1112. We were already losing $1,140 to the deficit factor last year. That number was up to $1,282 at the beginning of the year and we had an additional 55 tacked on top of it. So now we're losing about $1,336 uh, per ADA. And for next year, if the taxes fail, that number jumps up to uh, 1930 and change. So we've got a huge gap that's going and growing. And even if the taxes fail, I mean, if the taxes do pass, I'm sorry, if the taxes do pass, we still have an increase by the deficit factor uh, bumping up to $1,488 per student because the COLA is still offset even if the taxes pass. Now, this graph you have seen before, and there's actually one additional line that isn't on here that you'll see in a future presentation. Right now we have the, the graph if the taxes pass and if the taxes fail. And under if the taxes fail, for next year you'll see we drop that lowest point in green, $4,838 per student. That number, if the governor or if the legislature chooses to follow the governor's revised lead and move the transportation cut to the revenue limit, that number drops by an additional $85 and drops down to $4,753 per student. And that will roll forward as an ongoing gap or an ongoing cut. So when we should be receiving this year $6,489, we're only receiving $51.52 per student. Next year, we should be receiving $66.96, and we're looking at, in the best case scenario, $5,200. And in the worst case scenario, 4,753. Meanwhile, our dollars per student is one part of our factor of figuring out the revenue limit. The rest is our enrollment as a district. We are still declining. We're projecting a decline of about 201 units of ADA this year. And for next year, we have to factor in the Clayton Valley conversion, another loss of 1,777 approximately units of ADA. So it causes our ADA to do this huge drop that you see between 11-12 and 12-13. So much so that we actually create a new phenomenon for our district. If the Clayton Valley waiver is approved, and we certainly hope that it is because financially it's better off for all the students in the district if it is, in 2013-14 or 14-15, 13-14 is going to be right on the border, but in 14-15 at the latest, we will drop below 30,000 units of ADA. What that means is that what we currently set aside as a 2% reserve will become a 3% reserve requirement because of being a district, or we fall from being a large district to a medium-sized district in the calculation of that reserve. So the revenue limit, I don't know why I lost the top line here, that's kind of strange. Uh, 